Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is geometric topology. Today I try another invariant to distinguish the left and the right handed trifold and we'll see how it goes. So uh, a geometrically defined invariant in contrast to um, the colorability or the Conway polynomial. It's called the not genus. I will see what it is, but it's really cool. It's related to minimal surfaces and knots. And I will show you a really cool animation um, to a YouTube video actually linked in the description. It's not an animation. I show you a very nice YouTube video linked in the description, but I will also show it to you live. Okay, so let's have a look. So what I would like to do is I would like to use Seifert's algorithm to produce a surface associated to a knot. And what do I do? Well, it works as follows. Again, there's some orientation involved. Let's ignore that there's some orientation involved. But basically, you again use this smoothing idea. So whenever you have in this notation a crossing here, something like this, you actually can smooth it out into, well, this picture. So keeping the orientations and you glue in a little bend. Um, so going from one side to the other, which twists once. So here's some kind of little twisting bend uh, glued in. And you just do that for all crossings. OK, so you do the following. You start here with the figure eight knot. You resolve all crossings in this way. You end up with a bunch of circles. And you think of them as being like little platforms. Uh, so here's the little platform. Um, and then you connect them um, via the little bands. And you get pictures that look like a little bit like this. You have a platform here on top. You have a platform here. And you have another platform related here. So in this one is kind of connected. Maybe I use a different color. Connected by a little bend. Here's a little bend. And here are two little bends. So it's kind of a little bit of a platform picture. Um, so roughly, it usually looks like these. And here are the bends connecting the little circles. So here's a circle, here's a circle, and here are three bends connecting the top circles to the bottom circle. OK, and that produces for you um, algorithmically a surface associated to a knot, and not just a random surface. By construction, the boundary of the surface is the knot. Um, so and that surface is called a Seifert surface. And how do they arise? Actually, it's not quite trivial from this description why this should work. You might run I mean, here in this example, OK, but you might run into some trouble somewhere. And maybe this algorithm is not well defined. Maybe it's actually not possible to construct those surfaces. Um, but it is. And here comes a cool way of doing this. So actually, the Seifert surfaces, in the end, we, we don't care. We won't care. That's geometry. That's the different part of geometry. So there's some area involved. But basically, the Seifert surface should be the minimal surface uh, uh, so in the sense of area that bounds the knot. And how do you see minimal surfaces? Well, it kind of, if you have a soap film, it kind of uh, tries to minimize its surface area to minimize tension. So soap films usually give uh, minimal surfaces for you. And this kind of proves that they exist. So let me show you a video to convince you that it actually works. And we'll actually see here this picture is should be this picture just rearranged. Uh, but anyway, let's have a look. OK, here's the video. Let's enjoy. So um, Zyphert surfaces with soap bubbles or with soap films. We'll see what it is. And yeah, so typically they are made of, of joining those half twist bends. I showed you that. And here you can do it using uh, soap films. So this is one of them, the uh, one I showed you. Um, and let's produce this now. So in real life, you could do this. I, I'm just really lazy. I could have done it myself. But here you go. It's the same surface. It, it's, it's, this is beautiful. Um, I need to get rid of some little bubbles, and then you will see the surface. Pop, there you go. It's a minimal surface area bounding the knot. It, it's not very stable, but it's still pretty cool. So here's a figure eight knot. Uh, this is this threefold, this, this three platform type object, and the corresponding soap bubble. It's just, it's just so amazing. There you go. The minimal area uh, surface that bounds your knot. And again, you need to get a little a bit of a few of them, those little bubbles. But it actually, um, then it looks pretty perfect. Very, very beautiful. Oh, yeah, very, very beautiful. So I uh, really love this idea of, oh, it's gone. I love this idea of producing those surfaces that bound the knot using soap films. Uh, it's pretty cool. And this kind of proves that they exist, right? So but anyway, uh, this was just a decide why you should like those, why you should like those surfaces, why I do like those surfaces. And so it's kind of pretty cool. Say it again. Take your knot, you build it out of some kind of wire or something, put it in soap film, the area spent by the soap um, bounding the knot will be minimal, and the, the surface you see is uh, one of those Zyphon surfaces. Pretty, pretty cool idea. Okay, and then you can define the genus of a knot basically to be the genus of that surface. 
Um, well, I don't assume here right now that you know what a genius is. So here's the same picture. Again, you resolve all crossings. You have those little platforms. You build those little, little disks. They're connected by those, those bands. Here's the same picture again. Um, and I just want you to do, as I said, basically it's a genus of that surface, but we don't need to know that. We can use an Euler characteristic trick and I can just define the uh, genus to be the following. So I have D number of crossings. Uh, for example, here I have one, two, three, four. So D equals four, let's do the bottom one. I have F number of circles, one, two, three, F and three. And I have m number of components. It's just a one component object here. So m equals one. And I just define the genus of a projection. Very crucially, of this projection, the genus is whatever this number gives. So two plus four is six. Minus three minus one is two. And you write by two, so the genus is one. And if I would be brave enough now to do the calculation for the other one, it should give genus one as well. So you have a genus associated to each one of those cipher surfaces, basically just by, by a counting problem. And you might complain now that from the counting, it's not quite obvious why they should be kind of well-defined or something, but the genus is kind of a very classical object in topology. I just decided to define it completely combinatorial here for you. Um, anyway, so you have a genus associated to every knot and well, you then the genus of uh, to every projection, I'm sorry. And then the genus of a knot is just the minimum of all projections, which is very tricky to compute because you now we have to take the minimum of all projections. But the genus then itself is a really strong, actually pretty good knot invariant. Um, the warning here is that's very kind of crucial. It looks very computable. You just use Seifert's algorithm, right? And just produce those pictures and count those numbers. I mean, that looks very easy, but you need to take the minimum over all, which is way more difficult than just computing one of them. Um, so usually this, this doesn't give you minimal answers. So it just gives you an upper bound if you want. Hmm. But it's still it's still a pretty cool invariant. For example, it can distinguish the unknot. So the genus is zero, if and only if the, the knot is trivial. And this has clearly genus zero. So it has one component. It doesn't have any crossings at all. So M d i see one circle i guess um and then we look at our formula here again two uh plus zero minus one minus one looks to me like zero so genus is zero okay so that's pretty not, not really bad so the genus can distinguish the unknot from any other knot that is pretty cool uh but the genus itself is really hard to compute because you kind of need to know all projections that's not quite true, but um, you still need to take the minimum of all projections. And just doing the Seifert algorithm is somehow not good enough. Uh, so side remarks that the Alexander polynomial can give you a lower bound for the genus. But anyway, problem <laughs> problem is, so the genus, very strong invariant, hard to compute, defined by geometry. This was clearly a geometric definition using the um, properties of the not being a three-dimensional object, the genus is still not good enough to distinguish the left and the right-handed preferred. Both have just genus one. We still can't tell them apart. So the genus looks like a very strong invariant. It's it's very different from the invariants we have seen before. They were all kind of defined combinatorially. This is defined geometrically. It's still not good enough. It can distinguish the unknot from every other knot but it can't distinguish the two mirror images of the trefoil. That's still very, very disappointing. So we are still stuck with the same problem and it's getting a bit annoying. Okay, so, but let me wrap up the video. So the genus of a knot is actually a cool definition. You have those soap film pictures, so soap bubble pictures, where you just take your knot, build it out of wire, put it into soap, you get a Zephyr surface and you compute the genus of that surface. The problem is you need to minimize of all of them which makes it so hard to compute. But you still get a cool invariant, a genus of a knot, which is strong enough to detect, for example, the unknot. Um, and that's not trivial at all. And uh, most invariants are not strong enough to detect the unknot. Uh, still, it is not good enough, very disappointing. As I said, it gets a bit annoying right now that we still can't distinguish the left and the right-handed trefoil. So I guess we have to do better in another video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope to see you next time.